Okay, so this video is going to be on solving uh, compound inequalities, and I'm just going to give an example, a quick example, hopefully, of each type of compound inequality you may uh, come into face with. So the first one here is just uh, two inequalities that are separated by the word or. Uh, so we're going to solve them, and then we're going to get to graphs now. All right, so <clears throat> when solving these, it's they're solved the same way as if they were equations. So essentially, you're going to look at uh, each of them, and you're just going to solve this first one like it's its own equation, solve this one like it's its own equation, and then you're going to combine their answers through the word or onto a single graph. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so first step here in solving this one, I take 5x plus 3, and it says less than or equal to 8. Uh, so essentially what I want is I want my left-hand side just to have X's on it, so I don't want this to be here. So if I don't want this to be here, I simply turn it into zero. And the way I turn it into zero is I uh, increase the sentence with a minus three. So now when I go to combine three and negative three, it makes zero. Just need to be careful because when you uh, choose to make zero out of that value, property of equality states, you must do it to the other side. So I write minus three as well. So now I'm left with five X is less than or equal to five. Uh, last step is to isolate the x. Um, so in this case, you can simply, because the coefficient of x is an integer, um, I generally will use division. So in this case, I'll divide by five, divide by five, and I get x is less than or equal to the value of one. Okay, and then that is now done. All right, that problem's done. What's important is you throw the word or down there, so don't forget that word or, and then we go on to the next one. Okay, so this problem done the same way. Uh, and notice I only have one variable, so I'm gonna get rid of this positive two here. So the way I get rid of positive two is by subtracting two. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to subtract uh, two. So now I'm left with this idea of negative four X is less than negative 20. Uh, at this point, because the coefficient of x, right, the number in front of x, that's what a coefficient is, since it's an integer, um, i.e. not a fraction, okay, I'm going to go ahead and use division. Now, just need to be careful, because when I introduce division into an inequality, if my very next symbol is a negative, okay, that is an indicator that my inequality symbol has to switch, okay? So when I write my final answer, it's no longer gonna be a less than, it now will be a greater than. So negative four, divide by negative four. So here's the important part. So there's the X, it's the X stays on the same side. It's literally the inequality that simply switches, and I say greater than five. And then from there, I'm now done. I mark that answer. Now, <clears throat> the word or, is important because the word or helps me figure out what my final solution will look like and for inequalities what we use for a final solution is a number line so here's my number line and what we need here okay are the two important values on this graph are going to be one and five now it doesn't mean that my final answer is going to have a one to five on it so when i deal with compound inequalities okay i show my work above the the graph and then i compress it into one so or is this idea, okay, that you can, anywhere you have one solution, you, you can do it. So let's go ahead and, and show my work above. So above one, I'm going to put a closed circle because that's what the inequality states. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to shade, and I'm going to say that this one would shade to the left because it's x is less than. So any value less than one is to the left. And then I go ahead and I go to five. So at five, I would put an open circle and I would shade to the right. Now, Okay, so here is my work that is above the graph, all right, and generally, you just have to be careful, all right, so I'm just going to redo this one, a little bit above it, so I stagger them, okay, so here's my work, okay, so you just have to be careful because generally what you will do, okay, for and, all right, is, uh, uh, is you have to look for something else composed to and, and or, all right, we're essentially I'm gonna look for where is there not where is there not any solutions. And what I notice here is if I look into the middle of my graph, okay, so in the middle of my graph here, this okay is kind of like where there is no shading. All right, so there's nothing in here in this highlighted red spot. Well, because there's nothing there, or is this idea where because there's nothing there, I'm gonna shade everywhere else. So the idea of or you're kind of shading everywhere i'm sorry you're kind of shading everywhere okay that there isn't anything so i'm going to have this okay so that one has something an open circle here and i can shade this way 
So basically, the only reason I wouldn't shade a part of the line is because it's empty. So in here, it's empty. So that's the only part I leave blank. So that's kind of how I think about or. Um, or I kind of look for where shouldn't I shade as opposed to where should I shade. Uh, and I shade everywhere else. So I kind of look at this as the converse as opposed to looking for where I shade again. I look for where shouldn't I shade. And um, the or is pretty simple because I'm just looking for is there any blank spots on my graph. And if there's a blank spot, then I leave it blank. So that's for or. So on to the next one. Okay, so we have this problem here. It says x plus 3 is less than 23, and now we switch over to and. So this is the second type of uh, component equality you'll have. So we're going to solve this the same way as we would before. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to isolate x. So I'm going to go minus 7, minus 7, and I get x is less than 16. And so I'm going to bring the word and down. So I have this value here. Okay, and then I'm going to go to this side, the other one. So this one's now done, and I go now to the other one. So I'm going to do distributive property. Uh, just be careful. Um, just because my value that I'm distributing is negative does not mean I flip the inequality. I only flip the inequality when I introduce a property of equality. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and distribute the negative. Distribute the negative. So this is negative 2x minus 8 is less than or equal to 10. Again, I do not flip the inequality because distributive property is not a property of equality. So I'm going to keep solving this. So I get uh, plus 8, uh, plus 8. So I make 0 out of this side, and I get negative 2x is less than or equal to the uh, 18. And then my last step here is going to be divide. So now, notice I'm working in properties of equality. So what I do to one side, I will also do to the other side. So if I have this time, I'm dividing on both sides, followed by a negative, that is my clear signal that that inequality is going to flip to a greater than. All right, so then I drop the x down with the 2, with the 2, and then I get 18 is greater than or equal to negative 9. So then I have that answer here, okay? So... Now, let's talk about this because what's important is we always come back to the signal word of the type of compound inequality, and that's an and. So, so we have this problem. We have the number line, right? And what I need is important are my numbers on the number line, which are going to be negative 9 and 16. Those are two numbers that have to be on my number line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph them, and I always graph them above. So I, it doesn't matter which one you start with. That's irrelevant. Um, but I am going to graph them both above, and then I'm going to put my final solution onto the number line for the values that x can be. So in this case, I'm just going to start with reading from left to right here. So I'm just going to start with the, uh, the x is less than 16. So what is important is direct, definitely knowing which way you should be shading. Uh, since x is less than, I'm choosing all numbers less than 16. And I'm just going to use my negative 9 for reference. Is negative 9 less than 16? Yes, so I'm going to shade towards it. Okay, and then I'm going to go on to my negative 9. So my negative 9 has a closed circle at it. So notice I am keeping these two things staggered, uh, one above the other. Uh, so here we go, and then I say x is greater than negative 9. Well, I'm just going to use my other number, 16. Is 16 greater than or equal to negative 9? And that's true, so I'm going to shade towards the 16 in this case. Okay, so notice if I had said false, I would have gone the opposite way. But, all right, so and. And is this idea of overlap, okay? It's the idea of overlap. So what I take a look at is I'm looking for, does one line, where, do, where does one line happen to be traveling over top of another line? And if you notice in this section, okay, from negative uh, 9 to 16, I have overlap there. And, and that's essentially what I'm looking for. Uh, you can clearly see that if I go past that, okay, if you go past that value here, this does not have overlap, okay? No overlap. There's only one line there and no overlap here. There's only one line there. But if you look in the middle here, notice I'm able to highlight that I see two lines. So the green area is my, is my solutions. And then the red part, I cut off of my final answer. So at negative nine, I drop this indicator down of a closed circle and at 16 I drop its indicator down so this indicator comes down here okay and it's an open circle and what I'm just going to do is I'm going to take these two lines and that's where I'm going to graph my final solution so my final solution is between negative 9 and positive 16 so let's try one more that's one other type that you might encounter and it's the one that uh, most people you, you kind of see this more often than you would think but uh, yeah. All right, so this is what we like to call the the 
and the hidden and and I call it the hidden and um, simply because you don't actually see the word and okay and with that being said the question is, is how do I solve it well I'm basically looking at two inequalities and I, I don't want to get rid of one of them the goal is not here to to turn two inequalities into one equality so you're not trying to do that uh, in fact there's no actual mathematical way that you can do that uh, to actually get rid of it because to get rid of the inequality you would have to have nothing there and unfortunately zero is a number that's not nothing to us in mathematics so Let's talk about how we solve this. So what I want you to understand is I'm going to put something out here. I want you to understand that basically I'm reusing this expression. So you have two options here. You can solve this directly in the problem or you can break this out okay, into two inequalities claiming 8 is less than or equal to 3x plus 5 okay, and then recycle. So here we go. We do this, uh, this, what is this, recycle symbol here. Okay, we're going to recycle the middle and we're going to use that expression again. Okay, and we're going to then write the other one out. Now, just remember that we're writing and in between. So now the and is no longer hidden. So because the fact is that I have this problem that is reusing the same thing twice, to solve this problem, I'm going to use identical, okay, identical uh, properties of equality. So what most people will do is they will not do this, and I personally, I do not do this either, and I wouldn't show my students to do this either, but I mean, if this helps for you to do this, then please do this. Um, so you just break them out, and then you're going to solve them individually. Just remember that when you break it apart, you break it apart and connect it with an and, and you can solve that and go from there. However, for this video, I am definitely going to demonstrate it of how you would solve it uh, directly out of the problem. And the reason I'm able to solve it directly out of the problem, though, is because I am recycling the middle to solve both for the left side and for the right side. So as opposed to doing this as one problem and then another problem, okay, what we're simply going to do is we're going to do it all at once. So I, okay, uh, I'm literally going to solve both the left-hand side and the right-hand side simultaneously all right, to save myself some time. So I'm kind of thinking this is two problems. So the first time, let's solve the left side. So I want to essentially still get isolate x. So the way I would isolate x is I'd turn positive 5 into 0, so write a negative 5. And I'm thinking on the left-hand side here, so I'm thinking of solving it and taking it away from 8, yes? So now I'm just going to remember here that, okay, well, if I was solving for the right-hand side, I would just recycle this, this number. So I'm going to recycle it again, and I'm going to go ahead and subtract 5 from the other side. And basically I'm able to solve both inequalities simultaneously because they all require the same properties of equality. So 8 minus 5 is 3. That is now less than or equal to 3x, which is now less than 21. And at this point, again... All right, I just continue to solve, and the way I would solve here is instead of using multiplication by reciprocal, I because it's an integer, I'm going to divide, and I'll divide. And again, just remember that if I, I can solve both at the same time because they both require identical properties of equality as opposed to solving them separately. And what you get here is a divide by 3, and now what I have is 1 is less than or equal to this value of x, which is then less than 7. And when I read it and graph it, I'll also show you how I graph it. Um, but these ones, okay, like this, you, you'll, you'll begin to notice that uh, to kind of short script it, all right, or shorthand it, or not have to do as much work, is that these are the ones that we call closed intervals, okay? Uh, and our reason I call it a closed interval is because it's not going on forever. Um, but either way, you look at it here, what... Uh, what I want you to know is that this interval, okay, this is a direct interval that it, it shuts on both ends. It doesn't continue on one, one side forever, and it's an interval that's a value that's between 1 and 7. So um, for these ones, I go directly to looking at the graph, and I go, okay, it's between 1 and 7. But just to show this, it can be done the same way as we've always done this, okay? And that is we go to 1, and I put a, a, a closed circle above. And this problem tells me 1 is less than any other number, so 1 is less than x, so I'll just choose 7. Is 1 less than 7? And the answer to that is true, so I'm going to shade towards 7. So I'm going to draw my line towards 7, okay? And 
I'm also going to go up to 7. I'll put an open circle. And this one, I now read it. I start again. I recycle saying the middle. So x is less than 7. And x is less than 7. So I'm just going to use the number I have. 1 is 1 less than 7. The answer is yes. So what we have here is a quick little check. And we see, all right, for these, that they overlap in the middle. And indeed, these hidden ands generally 99% of the time unless someone's trying to give you a tricky one so just always double check here uh, don't presume that it's always going to be shaded correctly uh, directly in the middle but 99% of the time okay 99% of the time here these ones are where you shade in between the value okay unless your teacher's trying to give you a tricky one just to see if you uh, are actually paying attention to the values that are in the problem uh, meaning does it make sense is one indeed less than seven and the answer to that is yes and if I read this from left to right all of my symbols here are are all a less than so one is less than a number which can be less than seven so essentially I'm asking you is do I have numbers that can be greater than one yet less than seven at the same time and the answer to that question is inevitably yes and you can see that where they overlap in the middle by using the idea of and because remember you're looking for overlap and I go ahead and shade in the middle so again these problems 99% of the time are going to be directly shaded in the middle and the work that I'm doing above this part this part above here uh, really isn't kind of necessary um, but I like to do it just to double check and verify sometimes that I, I definitely indeed and I really like to check it uh, especially when there's a negative in the middle um, and so basically here are the values for which I can plug in for x that make the expression of 3x plus 5 a number greater than 8 and less than 26 and and then you there you'll have it so I hope that helps and uh, yeah take that with you